Step two, multi-tenancy. And multi-tenancy setups, we allow different organizations to share the same system while ensuring complete data isolation between them. This step involves assigning permissions based on the organization each user belongs to. In our open FGA model, we're going to add a layer of organizational separation so that the users have access only to the resources within their designated organization, like departments or business units, just like you might be used to with Google Drive or Dropbox. By creating this isolation, we give each organization complete control over their own data, making this model suitable for SaaS applications with multiple clients' companies. So if we take the same model that we've created in the previous step, but expand a little bit on it, you'll see that we still have the user type, a folder type and a document type, but we've added a fourth type, which is organization. And this organization type has two relation. First one is an admin. So any user we define as an admin of this organization. And lastly, the can edit folder relation or the can edit folder permission, which we assign to all of the admins within this organization. We've made a few changes to the folder type as well. First of all, we've added the organization relation to a folder, which can be any directly assigned organization, which means that we can associate folders with organizations. And lastly, the can edit uh, relation or can edit permission has changed a little bit as well. Um, but still, anybody that's an editor, anybody that's an owner or any user that has the can edit um, permission from a parent folder should be able to edit this folder and all its content. But anybody that has the can edit folders uh, relation from an organization, the organization that is related to this folder, should also be able to um, edit the folder and its constant contents. So what this means is that if you assign an organization to a folder, any admin of that organization should also be able to edit the folder and its contents, even if it's not directly assigned as an editor or an owner to this folder or their parents. Lastly, let's look at some tuples. The first three are the same and still owns the root. The root is still the parent of the document welcome and Bob is still the owner of um, the document, but we've added two more tuples. We've added a new a third user, the user Peter, um, which is an admin of the organization ICME and the organization ICME is associated with the root folder. So even though the root folder is owned by a user N, the organization ACME is also um, related to that folder as an organization. And then our tests remain the same and should still be able to see and edit, uh, view and edit the document. Um, Bob still should not be able to edit and view the root folder because he's only related to the document, but not the folder. Um, but because we have introduced an organization, our user Peter should be able to edit and view the root folder because the root folder is associated with our organization. It has a relationship uh, organization with the ACME organization. Um, and because of that, it should also be able to see all of the contents of that folder. So user Peter should also be able to edit and view the document welcome because Peter is an admin of the organization of the parent folder of this document. We can use the open FGA CLI again to run the tests within this, this FGA.yaml file by typing FGA model tests, dash dash tests, and then the name of the file, step dash two, multi-tenancy FGA.yaml. And if we run this, we'll see that we now have two tests, which are the test for basic example and the test for multi-tenancy um, and we're doing eight checks um, and they're all passing which means that we've successfully added multi-tenancy with an organization and an organization that can have an admin. So that's pretty cool. Let's take it one step further again in the next step.